your Stock Pulse Commodity Brief. Today's brief brought to you by Blue Sky Uranium. Blue Sky Uranium is Argentina's leading uranium discovery group with a positive PEA for the Nevada deposit. Blue Sky's Amarillo Grande project is the largest and most advanced uranium and vanadium project in Argentina. It has potential to be one of the largest and lowest cost uranium projects in the world. Blue Sky trades under the symbol BKUCF on the OTC and BSK on the Toronto Venture Exchange. Nighthawk Gold in the news today. Nighthawk trades as NHK on the TSX. More drilling at Colomac confirms a widening of its two best mineral zones to depth. With me now, the CEO, Dr. Michael Byron. Hey, Doc, appreciate the time as always here. Well, let's run through it here. Seven holes once you add a little color and some highlights to it. Certainly. Well, uh, today's release, I mean, it was just seven holes. So um, it was a, a small release, but I think impactful um, for as far as... as um, our, our um, main, say, core of the deposit, which is that area of 1.5 in Zone 2. So to put it into perspective, in, in, in 2017, we drilled a, a hole at, um, at Zone 1.5, and it was the deepest hole we've ever drilled, down to almost 900 vertical meters. And the idea was to test what appeared to look like a widening of the sill, and we weren't sure if it was real, so we thought, well, we'll just rip a hole down deep in, in, into the guts of this thing and see if it's widening. And and, uh, and on that uh, drill section, it went from, say, you know, 40 to 50 meter true width in the, in the shallow part of the sill down to 155 meters at depth. So then you're left with the question, is, is that just an, a localized anomaly or is the sill widening in depth? So this release, we put out a hole that 30... Uh, C1939B that was 270 meters to the south of that 1917 hole, and uh, we wanted obviously we're we're tracking mineralization down uh, higher grade mineralization down to depth, and, and we're noticing a an increase as well. So this hole delivered a you know a true width of almost 110 meters at uh, not quite the same depth as as the other one, but what it certainly um, uh, confirmed is that the sill in that area is in fact widening to depth and, and that's uh, impactful because we're looking at something that um, is over 100 meters wide, 100 155 meters wide. So for our American, American colleagues, that's, you know, 300 plus feet true width. Um, so it, it, uh, it's a sizable volume of rock. It's wedge shaped. So, you know, it's like a pie where uh, the thickest part is, appears to be at the bottom, but in that uh, in that that deposit that we're seeing there at, at zone 1.5 and 2, we've now defined it at over 500 meters in strike length and open, so it could be longer, especially to the south, from surface down to 700 plus meters, maybe 800 meters and open, and uh, in a shallower, you know, portions about 30 meter to width down to as we said 150 plus meters of depth. Um, so that's a big volume of rock, and that's what we're we're looking for is uh, as, as in, impacts like this that can really change the nature of, of uh, the Comac deposit. Uh, and the beauty of this is that obviously it's open at depth, and and uh, it's more importantly it's open a long strike to the south. So we'll continue probing it and seeing if we can continue to grow that. So that's that's really what today's you know highlight was is hey you know we've answered that, that nagging question of what's happening to depth. Now we're pretty confident we know. The other takeaway was we drilled a couple of holes at this very far south end of the sill, of, you know, like four kilometers south of, of where this uh, this hole that I just was talking about was drilled. And we were, in, and this is in zone 3.5, which is another high grade zone. And we were just testing the up plunge uh, portion of that that had never been drilled before to the south. So uh, we had never drilled in there, no one had ever drilled in there before, and, and so we there were shallow holes because you're you're tracking it closer to surface. And uh, what we hit was uh, some mineralization, higher grade mineralization that 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 set um, just below the the quartz diorite top of the sill, which is traditionally where all the gold is. And, and these are these are now a new style of mineralization that we haven't seen before, outside sort of the confines of the of the jewelry box of the sill. But uh, they're they're hosted in quartz veins, and so we know nothing about of the uh, opportunity here. So that we're kind of excited to go back and look at that in, in uh, 2020 because they're really shallow. Like I think the first cut was 35, 34 meters depth. So 
those are two two takeaways from the, this morning's release, both positive and uh, you know we're we're quite uh, enthused that uh, we've got some some really really good targets to work on in 2020. And again, only seven holes released, so start sprinkling these things out here. Yeah, you know we put a we put a a, a quick sort of a paragraph of how many holes are remaining at Gold, at Colmac and at Treasure Island and so on and so forth. So it's a, it's a sizable, you know, we've, we've now reported over, well, over, a little bit over half of, of our drilling to date. Um, so there's a, probably another three or four news releases on drill results. And then uh, we get into the uh, news release on our, on our, um, our uh, heat leach testing. So our bottle roll and column test, uh, those will be coming out shortly as well. And then uh, followed up with our regional prospecting and mapping exploration results. And that'll segue nicely into the start of 2020. So there'll be no gaps. Okay, that was Dr. Michael Byron, CEO, Nighthawk Gold, NHK on the TSX. Then caught up with Alan Berry from the Alan Berry Reports. And here were his comments on NHK's first batch of drill results. Nighthawk uh, NHK is, is, is a company that I started following about maybe six months ago. I uh, came into it fairly skeptical because uh, I've spent a lot of my career up in the uh, Northwest Territories and I know the cost of exploration and uh, development, uh, but I also had to keep attention because it's also a place where you've got some very exciting geology. In this case, Nighthawk has a very big land package in the green in a greenstone belt that is the right kind of environment uh, for finding big gold and gold deposits. And uh, they've got a few different uh, focuses there, but uh, one of them is big tonnage with a decent grade of, let's say, a gram to two gram kind of material. Then they've also got uh, high grade uh, stuff as well. And they're really banging away at it. They just announced, as Michael said in uh, your chat with him, they announced seven holes. What he described there was very interesting to me because he had talked about in 2017 that they had drilled down and to see if the um, zone is widening at depth where they, where in fact it did near the surface it was 40 to 50 meters, and then as you got deeper, they got down to around 150 meters of width, and he kind of uh, described it as a pie shape, where at the close to the surface, you've got 40 to 50 meters at the tip of the pie, and then as you go down, you get deeper. And what was interesting was that in this drilling, they stepped out, let's say, well, it was 270 meters and they got the pie is still thick wide down at that big step out so now they have about 500 meters of strike and that's still open both at uh, a long strike and at depth so they're g gaining some size to that um, that pie if you will and it's uh, it's a pretty interesting uh, development for them that uh, they still got the strike and the depth open they also drilled some uh, four kilometers away, and they hit some higher grade material in that uh, uh, in that uh, four kilometer away zone. So it's very interesting. They have more holes to report. Uh, they're going to be doing heap leach testing to see what the recoveries look like. That could be really crucial because that could be uh, something that uh, really sets them apart in one of these uh, bigger tonnage and uh, pretty high grade for a big tonnage type target. Uh, they also did some regional sampling that could generate some new targets. So between now and the spring, summer, when they get back to drilling, uh, they could have a lot of good news. And the stock is uh, traded from 31 cents on the low to 73 cents on the high, currently trading at 41 cents. And um, I think this is one you wanna take a look at for, uh, for bargain hunting and getting ready for next season when they crank up the drills again. 
StrikePoint Gold in the news recently. StrikePoint trades as SKP on the venture. It intersects 72 grams per ton gold and 55 grams per ton silver for a meter and a third at Willoughby up in the Golden Triangle. With me now, CEO Sean Kuhn Kuhn. Hey, Sean, appreciate the time and update as always. More good news up there. I want you to put some color to the news and uh, run through these results. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, you know. Today, this morning, we announced um, 72 gram gold and 55 gram silver over 1.3 meters. That's one of six holes that we uh, reported today. Um, you know, we had some other very positive intercepts: um, five meters uh, of gold and 35 grams of silver over four meters. 22 grams of gold and 350 grams of silver over a meter. Uh, 1.27 meters. So, you know, in every single hole, and and this is uh, six holes of a total of a 12-hole drill program. All holes have been reported. All holes hit gold mineralization. Uh, you know, at ranging from one gram gold to 100 gram gold. And and basically, if you look at this Willoughby property, when we acquired it back in April, we acquired the project and we inherited 120 diamond uh, drill holes. And so, you know, our goal was to validate the historic work that was done in the 90s, but also step out and, and grow um, the, uh, the deposit. And, and essentially, one of the question marks we had going into the 2019 field season was, you know, the previous explorers had identified seven different zones. And um, what we tried to do this season is we tried to connect the dots in between the mineralization. There are some areas that had not been drilled. And, um, you know, I, I'm happy to report that we have successfully validated the high-grade uh, historic work. But most importantly, um, we stepped out 100 meters and uh, we're finding, uh, you know, economic uh, grade over, over mineable width. Um, you know, we, one of our highlights uh, from the drill program was 26 grams of gold and 95 grams of silver over four meters. So, you know, I'm just very, very proud of the team. You know, we executed on time, on budget. Uh, this is steep terrain. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we had an incident-free program. So, uh, no, very, very, very happy. And I'm looking forward to 2020. Uh, I'm looking forward to take these, this new information, not only from the 12 drill holes, but also from all the surface work we've done plug it in with all of the historic work that was done in the past and uh, and then come up with some new targets and, and ways where we could potentially grow a resource on this Willoughby property. Certainly sounds like you've got a lot going on up there. I imagine you're taking year-end to accumulate the data and put together a plan for 2020, but looks like you're going to be a pretty busy guy, huh? Well, you know, we're in, we're in a neighborhood where um, last October um, there was a deal done um, between our largest shareholder, Ascot, where they acquired Jaden Resources, and the value of the deal when it was announced was about $25 million. Jaden had about a 250,000-ounce resource. And then a few months later, um, Ascot made a, made a bid for IDM Mining, and IDM Mining's Red Mountain project is only four miles away from Willoughby. And uh, IDM had about... Uh, Call it about 800,000 ounces at seven gram gold. The 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 purchase price on on IDM when the deal was announced was about 45 million dollars. So we're in a neighborhood where we have an active, aggressive lead consolidator, and uh, we're hitting grades that are in line with some of these uh, rich deposits that are in the neighborhood. So we've got, you know, this Willoughby property has an absolute legitimate shot here. Uh, in addition to Willoughby, we have the Porter Project, which is a high-grade silver deposit. It's a, it's a 43101 compliant 12.7 million ounce silver resource at 868 gram per ton. So we have two flagship assets in the triangle, and then we've got this big portfolio in the Yukon. And Rob, what I, what I want to do with that Yukon portfolio is you're going to see the company start to do deals. We're going to start divesting and start creating a portfolio of stock and cash based on the divestment of the over 20 properties that we hold up in the Yukon. So I think strike point is you know really interesting at this time because we've got you know such a low valuation and we have you know very very creative ways to enhance um, our treasury in a non-dilutive way.
Okay, that was Sean Kuhn Kuhn, CEO, Strike Point Gold, SKP on the venture. Then caught up with Alan Barry, the Alan Barry Reports. Here were his comments on SKP's drill results. Yeah, Rob, that was some interesting stuff from Strike Point. Uh, SKP is their stock symbol. They're run by uh, Sean Kuhn Kuhn, who gave us a very good uh, overview of the what they're doing, uh, especially regarding the recent discovery of high-grade gold and silver in the uh, in the uh, Golden Triangle area. Uh, I also like the uh, the sounds of they had widespread gold distribution um, and on a bunch of their holes, which is suggestive of a big system. That's what you want is a big system with high grade, and they had uh, some nice grades of both silver and gold. Their highlight hole, as he said, was four meters of 26 grams per ton gold and 95 grams of silver. Um, the uh, Another thing that stood out to me was this project had a lot of historical uh, drilling where they had drilled over 100 holes and hit seven different zones on the project. And what these guys have been doing at Strike Point is trying to connect the dots. And uh, it looks like they've got a lot of wide open uh, dots to keep connecting uh, when they get back in there next year for the 2020 drill program. Another important thing was that they have uh, done a lot of surface sampling in 2019, which will help them in conjunction with the uh, drilling to be able to um, uh, connect those dots and grow what they have. And um, another thing that really stood out to me was that Matthew, or I mean, sorry, Sean had mentioned that they are, they've got a lot of projects in the Yukon. And it sounds to me like what they want to do with the Yukon stuff is turn into a prospect generator in the, with their Yukon stuff and get other companies to come in there and spend the money in order to advance these projects and then they've all, then they've got the combination of the Yukon and the Golden Triangle and it sounds like a pretty good game plan to keep them from getting too diluted so it's a an interesting story I think you want to pay attention to the seasonality that you know they're going to wait until the spring and fall to get rolling but um, you know on a on a 52 week sense of trading their stock is traded between four and 17 and a half cents it's currently trading at four cents that looks like a good entry point for anybody wanting to uh, have exposure to good exploration in the golden triangle and the yukon next year so keep uh, keep a close eye on this one looking for bargains more news here from McEwen Mining, MUX, and the TSX and NYSE. With me on the tarmac, uh, possibly about to take off here, Rob McEwen. Hey, Rob, appreciate you spending a few minutes here with me. Uh, why don't you run through the latest here? Gray Fox is growing as a title. Uh, highlight it, please. All right. Well, I'm just on my way down to our gold bar operation. And I think, <laughs> sorry, we're on takeoff right now. So I may have to pick you up um, a little later. Uh, but what we're having, uh, the release was on Gray Fox and two satellite zones, um, Gibson and Whiskey Jack, that aren't in our resource space. So um, there's some pretty nice holes, and the Gray Fox area has currently just under 600,000 ounces. We'll have a resource update out at the end of the year or beginning of next year, um, which will show, uh, I believe, a uh, a reasonable increase in the uh, resources there, and that'd be one of the areas to within three miles of our black box operation. So benefits from infrastructure, road, power, and uh, a base. So it, it would be an important development area for us. Appreciate that update. All the abbreviated one from McEwen Mining Chairman Rob McEwen. McEwen Trades is MUX and the NYSC and the TSX. Certainly look forward to checking back when they've got some more results to post. Now, what are your thoughts on the Mux news today? First of all, that was a pretty funny uh, uh, presentation or chat there. You don't often get the executive of a big company like Mux uh, calling you from the airport as he's about to leave. I hope it's a metaphor for the stock that, you know, it's uh, ready for takeoff. And in reality, Rob, I do think it's ready for takeoff. They've 
They recently, as we did on a show, they recently did a uh, $50 million financing that I think is going to help them to turn the company around. And uh, today they had that uh, nice high-grade gold results from one of their projects in Ontario. Um, it's, uh, I think they're ready for the turnaround. I think that they're suffering a little bit from the tax loss selling season, but uh, uh, I think this is one you want to have high on your list for excellent performance once we get into the new year. Generation Mining Limited, GENM on the venture, uh, Jamie Levy. Um, increase the mineral resource, the Marathon Palladium property. Break that one down. Yeah, this is um, this is an interesting one for for those that are wanting to get into the um, to the space of uh, palladium. Uh, there's not a lot of good platinum and palladium projects out there, and uh, this is definitely one. They've got about seven million ounces of uh, of uh, palladium. So that would be a very big gold resource, and uh, and uh, and this, the price of palladium is trading a few hundred dollars an ounce more than the price of uh, a gold. Yet the stock is languishing. It's uh, had been sort of going sideways for the last seven months or so. The uh, it uh, it definitely looks like it's underloved. Uh, the 52-week range is nine and a half cents on the low to. 36 cents on the high, currently trading at 21 cents. Doesn't trade a whole lot. It's like a really undiscovered gem, uh, especially for those, again, that want to look into uh, palladium. It's really hard to find good, and that might be part of the reason why it kind of languishes here, Rob, is maybe there's not a lot of interest in palladium stocks because there's not a lot of good palladium stocks to find. But this one looks like a for real deal. They're they're getting no love right now. I think they're a bit of a victim of the tax loss selling. So I, I'm expecting better things out of this company. And I think if you can buy it and have some patience, it will be rewarded. So moving on here to uh, Osisco Mining, been chasing John Brzezinski, the CEO, down. Um, good intersects here at the Lynx Extension. Break this one down. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the Osisco group. I, I originally started following the original uh, Osisco when they were about a dollar a share when they were first finding the Malartic deposit, which is now a 26 million ounce deposit. That's a mine. Um, it's one of Canada's best mines. And this is the same people running the company. And Osisco has uh, 13, they recent results were 13 meters of 106 grams per ton of gold. It's a Quebec project. It's in the right kind of rocks for big mines. It has one of the highest grade uh, resource stage projects in Canada. It's a really top notch project, yet they suffer from the tax loss selling season, Rob, trading near their 52 week lows. And I, I think this is another one that people want to be paying attention to because uh, they've already got a few million ounces in the resource. And I think this one's going to get a whole lot bigger than a few million ounces. So keep an eye on it and look for it at the cheap price it is these days. Galway Metals here, GWM on the venture, Robert Hinchcliffe. Uh, some good uh, intersects here in the gap between Richard and uh, Jubilee at Clarence Stream. Break that one down. Yeah, actually, Rob, what they're doing is they're putting together three zones that now look like they're one big zone. And this, they're, this is another one that's like an Osisco where they're they're looking for something pretty big. The, the team that's involved with this one, they originally were generation, generation resources that was taken out for about $320 million or something like that. So these guys know what they're doing. This is a district scale project they have. They have the few different zones on it. Those zones can range from, you know, things like eight meters of nine grams per ton gold, uh, they've got uh, other hits there where they're looking at, um, you know, very similar type um, uh, hits and uh, uh, ranging from high grade to low grade big tonnage. It's a really interesting project with these three different zones. And uh, I just think that this one's another one that could uh, could be a, a one that's an underloved company. But I sure like the potential with their Richard and their 
Jubilee and their Clarence Stream all seeming to come together into one big uh, deposit. And that's the kind of thing that majors are looking for, Rob. Something they can put into production fairly quickly, start making money right away, and a uh, big open pit kind of situation. So I like this one a lot, GWM. And last one on the radar today was uh, Gold on GLD on the venture. Mike Romanix, the CEO, got a call into him, hoping to grab him at an update on uh, Slate Falls Gold Solar Project in Northwest Ontario. Yeah, this is one I hope you get a hold of them because they've, they've got they've got a they've got interest in the Red Lake area. Then this one that they announced the results from, and uh, both everything they have um, is very serious because they're. Uh, uh, the prospector, the actual, it's the same prospector who found, uh, Great Bear did the deal with the, on the ground that they have in Red Lake. So really experienced um, uh, prospector. And the news today was quite interesting. It was an update on their drill results, or their drilling, but not the results yet. They talked about 1,000 meters of drilling on their 100% owned Slate Falls gold silver project but what i found interesting is they talked about the surface samples and then the undercut holes right below those surface samples some of those surface samples were like 331 grams of gold 3000 grams of silver um, other 32 grams of gold 542 grams of silver so there was a bunch of these surface samples that they took and then they drilled right underneath it with that thousand meters and those results are pending this is a really interesting one to watch they could be onto something very serious rob i would not if i were them i wouldn't be putting those uh, surface samples out with an exploit nation that i just drilled right underneath it unless I saw something in the drilling that gave me a feeling that we might be able to reproduce what we saw in the surface samples with the drill holes. If they do, this one will come to life in a big way because there's only 15 million shares out on it at its current price of around 60 cents. That gives it a, what's the market value, $9 million Canadian or something like that. And with a tightly held stock like that, if they can deliver any kind of drill holes that look like those surface samples, this one could blast off. Okay, appreciate that insight from Alan Berry from the Alan Berry Reports. And that's it for today's brief. If you're a fan of the information, please subscribe to the channel, like, follow, and share the broadcast. And if there's any news you'd like debriefed, please email a message to info at stockpulse.com. We'll be back soon with more CEO debriefs, as long as I can get them to answer the phone. <laughs>